In tonight's starting point photography segment, uh, brought to you by, well, no one actually. Uh, if you want to sponsor, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll take money for it. I have, I have no pride in that regard. Um, so, <laughs> I, what is it, two, three weeks ago, le less than 21 days ago, I um, very, very excitedly got my very first official drone, a DJI Mavic 2 Pro, a fantastic drone. Uh, our son, Damon, who is a professional drone pilot and a professional photographer, an amazing videographer, amazing photographer, um, has posted and taken some incredible videos with his previous version of the Mavic called the Mavic Pro, was deeply jealous over this drone. It had, the, the two has got better, better life. It's got a better, much, much better camera, uh, a bunch of other features that he just absolutely loved. He actually wants to, wanted to rent it from me to go do his drone shoots. So if you follow me on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook or, you know, social media in general, you'll know that I posted up um, quite a few photos, videos of the drone. And the thing that got me was how much people were saying, oh, these videos are great. I'm thinking, but they're just auto. They're just the drone on auto mode, auto photography, auto videography. I'm still learning how to fly the damn thing. So the photography aspect of it has taken a back seat until I learn how to control the machine. So just on auto, the thing takes great video. Just on auto, the thing takes great photos. And I'm thinking, oh my God, it's going to be amazing if I learn to use it. What was it Monday? Yesterday? Was it yesterday? Did this happen yesterday? Yes, yesterday. Oh my goodness, yesterday. So Monday morning, um, I get up, I go for my walk at 730, and I'm wandering around, and often the distance, we live up on, on a hill here in Gibsons, and we can see down, in when you walk around our neighborhood, there's a vantage point where you can see down into the, what's the body of water up there called? Well, inside, not inside passage, it's Gibson, well, it's Gibson sort Harbor. Of part of the, well, I guess it's not really Georgia Strait, Gibson's yeah, Harbor. Gibson's Gibson Harbor. Yeah, but you can hear the foghorns yes. from bed. And the, so the whole town was covered in fog. I come back home, I tell Melissa, the whole town's covered in fog. She said, you should go out and fly the drone in the fog. And I was like, oh yeah, that could be kind of cool. So I go up Monday and uh, fly. Uh, I've missed most of the fog. I, I'm chasing it all over the place. But by about 9 o'clock, 9.30, the fog has rolled out of town. So Tuesday morning, I'm going to go get fog pictures. So I get up bright and early on Tuesday morning. I'm out the door at 7.30, 8 o'clock. I'm going to go get drone pictures. I drive down to a couple locations. I got some really, really lovely uh, pictures of the, the drone flying through low level flying. Uh, I'm going to, uh, Melissa, I'm going to block your face while I think I can show this video to folks. Hang on a second. Uh, let me show. Here we go. So here is one of the, let me do this full screen so folks can, can see it. Hopefully the audio is still up and working. So here is one of the, 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 the drone shots that I took. And this is just flying the drone up through the fog. Oops, I know what I'm doing wrong. You guys can't see it. All, all you guys can see is fog. Because this thing is too big. Too big, too big, too big, too big. I got the zoomed in on Melissa's face. So, so there we go. Let me go back. So here's, here's what I shot up through the fog. And it came out really, really nicely. I, mean, I really liked the way this um, image came out, the way it, it, it showed itself to me. It's a very thick fog. But I wasn't in the fog. It was definitely very, very thick. But in that regard, I wasn't, I wasn't flying into the fog, per se. So I, I wasn't worried... Mm -hmm too much about that. Here's another one of me flying above the fog and then um, capturing the video of the town. Mm. This is the beautiful town of Gibson's. The, 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 the town we live in. And this is just, I didn't fly through the fog. I flew above the flog, the flog, the fog, and then took this panorama slow motion shot around the town. 
And the idea was to get a bunch of these different shots and then merge them together into a story, into a video that I wanted to you know, post on the interwebs and, and show off. To so there you can see the islands and yes. then the North Shore Mountains. North Shore Mountains, yeah. And then Soames Hill, which Sean insists is a mountain, but it's not. It's a mountain. It's just a hill, folks. <laughs> Stop calling it just a hill. And so, and finally, here's here's another um, another pass with the like fingers reaching out to everything. That's what I really like. I like that. I effect. love that when it's a sunny day and it just sits in the harbor like that. Oh, it's just magic to me. So there's the there's the North Shore Mountains. Um, you can see Bowen Island, Bowen Island Gambier yeah. Island. I think that might be Keats right there. Yes, right, Ke- that's Keats, Keats yeah, Island. Yeah, right across right, from. You right could there. swim over to Keats if, from Gibson's Harbor. So I was having a blast uh, doing that. I was having a blast flying in those conditions and in that area. So then I walked down to the um, the harbor, Gibson's Harbor, and went to fly the drone uh, through the harbor. Now, the harbor had some fog in it. It wasn't thick fog, but it had tendrils of fog. It, it, it wasn't nothing but fog, but there was some, certainly some fog there. And as I'm flying through that aspect of, oh, hang on, let me get this big again. As I'm flying through that, I, there we go. So here on, on this, you can see the circular dot is where I was standing when the drone took off, and the tri- the red triangle is the drone when it took off, and the green line is the flight path of the drone. So I take off from this location. I fly. That looks like 20, 30 feet. And you can see this is the, uh, the data track for the drone, so you can see... Here at the bottom of the screen, the height, the distance, the battery voltage, how many GPS signals it got, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this was all well and good. It was flying nicely. I flew um, about 20 feet off the ground out over that dock you see in the, the, the video. And then I, I rose the drone, drone up because I wanted to get some more of these fog shots, these, these spinny fog shots. And again, it was very, very light fog. I could still see the drone. I could still visually make eye contact with the drone. Suddenly, the drone started acting weird. I didn't know why it was acting weird. It suddenly started to come down. I looked down at my screen, and I saw that the drone thought it was at minus one meter. It's not. I'm looking up at the drone. I know it's not at minus one meter. And then the drone plummets into the water. The last thing in the world you want to hear when you're flying a drone over water is splash. And then the signal goes dead on the drone. The drone, Dexter, as he was affectionately called, drone decided himself into the inky depths of Gibson's Harbor. It should not have done this. There was no reason for it to have done this. Except, so there's a website called uh, uh, navicpilots.com. And so I go on the website. Now, Melissa and I have bought what's called DJI Refresh, which is basically an insurance program for the drone. And DJI says that we will replace your drone up to two times in a year. Even if it's pilot error. If you, No matter if you screwed up, we will replace your drone. So, I asked the folks on the Mavic Pilots forum, because I had done some research and saw that if you couldn't send the drone back to DJI, they wouldn't replace it. And that's fair. I understand that. The reason for that is is obvious. DJI doesn't want a situation where people are faking losing a drone and going, I don't have a drone. Give me another one. And now I have two drones. So I get that it's part of their corporate restrictions that you got to physically send the drone back to them. But the problem is, you know, fairly obvious, the drone's in the water. I can't get it out of the water. 
So the guys in the Mavic forum <clears throat> asked me to post the flight logs. One of the cool things about the DJI um, app and drone, as bad as their software is, is that it automatically downloads flight logs to your phone. And those flight logs, after jumping through some hoops, can be exported so that others can look at them. Well, the guys on the forum looked at the flight log, and the guys are much smarter than I am, said that it was a confluence of events. It was the light fog may have confused the downward-facing sensors on the drone, making the drone think it was only a foot off the ground, even though it was 25 feet in the air. Combined with the fact that I was pulling the throttle down. It was 25 feet in the air, and I wanted it to come down to get a better shot. Combined with the fact I had, and this is ironic, landing protection turned on. Those three things, the fact the drone thought it was a foot off the ground, the fact that I had full throttle down, and the fact that I had th landing protection turned on. If any one of those things hadn't been in place, the drone wouldn't have done this. It was a complete fluke that all three of these things happened at the same time. The other problem was the drone on the screen of the iPhone gave me no indication that it was putting itself into a forced landing mode. Usually, if you've flown a drone, if you use an automatic mode, there's a big circle with an X through a big red circle on the side of the screen that lets you cancel automatic modes. This forced landing mode didn't have that. So, the drone splashed down. It's gone. It's just, it's under the water. It can't be, it can be recovered, but it can't be used ever again. It's a piece of electronics that you dunked into salt water. There's no way that thing, as soon as it hit the water, it was, it was done. So I've done a support ticket with DJI. The problem is DJI is undoubtedly going to say this was pilot error. And the folks at the Mavic Pilots Forum agree with that. Yes, you made a mistake, but... You made a mistake doing a combination of things that DJI shouldn't expect the average user to know not to do those things. It's like, as I described it to Melissa this morning, it's like the old Nintendo codes. You know, if you push down twice, then left, then right, then click the A button, click up, and then click the C button, then click down, you'd get extra lives in Super Mario Brothers or whatever it was. That's the, 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 the guys in the forum say this is very similar to that. It was a, just a fluke. Plus the fact that the motors on the drone turned off for a moment. And they don't understand why that happened. So the good news is it looks like DJI will say, yes, pilot error. We will replace the drone. The problem is if they say, yes, pilot error will replace the, the drone, but you have to send the drone back to us, that's where we're screwed. Because it's at the bottom of the harbor. I have to, I'd have to hire a salvage guy at how much money? Two, three hundred bucks? To get a diver to go down there and look for that drone? Even if they could. Even if they could find it. So you're paying the salvage guy regardless of whether he finds it or not. So there's that. Hopefully what DJI says is, yes, it's pilot error. Yes, we will replace it. But because we recognize from the flight logs that it's in the water. They know from looking at the, the GPS and the flight logs, it ain't in a tree somewhere. It's not in a house somewhere. They know this thing flew out over the water, 20, 20 meters, 20, uh, 60 feet out, out of the water, uh, into the harbor, and came straight down from that point. They know this. They can't, I hope, reasonably expect me to be able to recover that drone and then be able to use it. Because that's the, that's the concern DJI has, is that you do a fake one of these, you get them to send you a new drone, and now you've got two drones. Or you've got one drone that's slightly broken that you can sell for parts and you've got a brand new drone. I get that that's DJI's concern. Hopefully what they will say is, don't worry about it, Sean. This was your fault, but our insurance program covers pilot error, and we won't expect you to send the drone back because we know it's underwater. So fingers crossed, the support ticket has been done with the uh, DJI tech support. And I'll hope we'll hear by the end of the week, maybe early next week, that uh, they've looked at the flight logs and uh, they agree with me that the drone's unrecoverable and they'll send me a new one. I would say 
Macmaz asking about the current. I there. I don't think there's a strong current there. It's very protected. Yes. It's not like a. I mean, the tides would come in, but I don't. It's not a strong current. And how deep it is, considering how far out Sean plummeted Dexter into the water, it's hard to say how deep it is. It could be quite deep out there. It could. Yeah, we don't. I, I don't. It's know. a harbor, so you know, it's not shallow. Yeah. Plains land. Plane's um, motor up to the dock that st- sits, sits out there. It's also very, very murky. That water is not clear at all. Near the shore it is. Yeah, but, but not as you go. Not, not, not as you and go. by the way, the plane landing, they're not, this time of year they don't, just in case you're wondering why Sean was flying yes. near where float planes come in. The, but the other issue, and this is the, the worst part about it, is that um, – um, if I had hired a guy right there on the spot, just immediately got on the phone and come down here now and paid them $300 that we don't have, frankly, to get the drone, and then DJI say, I oh, don't worry about it. I would have been pissed. But if they say, you, we're not giving you another one until you get this one back, the drone is now either covered up in muck, uh, has moved slightly from the current. It's been two days now. So it, it, if, if it moves... If there's a current there and it tumbles over and buries itself in the silt and the mud at the bottom, it's also gone. So, fingers crossed, like I said, DJI. Um, now, I have heard good and bad things about DJI support. One guy in the MavicPilots.com website said he flew his into the canals in Venice. And DJI sent him another one without any problems at all. So, Did fingers he say, crossed. So, it was lost. It was lost, yeah. He said he, he couldn't get it back. It was in the bottom of the Venice Harbor. And, and he said that to DJI, and DJI sent him a new one. The uncertainty is what's really going to suck. Like I said, I'm, I'm almost 100% positive DJI will say, yes, this is your pilot error. I accept that, except for what the MavicPilots.com guys say. You could have expected to know not to do this. It was, this wasn't as simple as I flew it into a building kind of thing. This was you did a bunch of strange things while the drone was confused. If I had done those things while the drone wasn't confused, none of this would have happened. Well, and the other day, I don't know if MacMan knows what it was, when it was just doing this strange arc. We were out at, well, right at water's edge, had been flying over the ocean. And he came back and was doing this weird, and I said to Sean, are you doing that? He said, no, it was like it was drunk. I had Dexter set to do an arc around Rory and Melissa. And so the idea was it was going to do a, take video and do a circle around them. But instead it was going... Is that toilet bowling? <laughs> I don't know if that's what that is. Yet. No, it wasn't swirling. It was in front no, of them. No, uh, yeah. Just going left It was and like right. it was going, do, 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 what a great day. And it, just kind of, It was like know, doing a pendulum. Doing a little pendulum in there. Anyway, oh, I'm not, if we get another one, I'm not naming it. I'm remaining unattached. No, why aren't you going to name it? No, it's like when you, no, no, I'm not going to. The real, and the reason why this is uh, the starting point for Dogma segment, the real uh, upsetting part about this is the the views you get with a drone, the pictures you can get with a drone. One of the things I always teach is to look for different angles of photographs. Look for, if you're, uh, Melissa is five foot two and a quarter, and so all her pictures would be five foot two. I'm six foot three, so my pictures are six foot three. So look for different heights of your photo. Get down low. Get up high. And the images you can get from a drone, even from 10, 20 feet high. I'm not talking about 100 meters in in the sky. I'm talking just above shoulder height, just 10 feet in the air, are really interesting angles of things. Plus, you can get images of things you can't get your camera to. Out in the middle of the harbor, 50 feet off the water looking back towards the town with the with the, the the sunlight coming down off Elphinstone Mountain was just a beautiful image. It was a great shot. The DJI Mavic 2 Pro has very, very similar um, control uh, 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 settings as a DSLR. You can change aperture. You can change shutter settings. You can change ISO. You can have... Uh, Aperture priority mode. You can have shutter priority mode. You can have full manual mode. You can change exposures. So all the things that we talk about with DSLRs that you can manipulate to get better shots, you can do that with a drone. It's like a flying DSLR. 
And because you're using this very, very good camera lens and very, very good sensor, it's a full one inch sensor, it's a Hasselblad lens with the Hasselblad color profiles, you get some really, really pretty images. Um, again, just an auto mode. I've, all the images that I've done, I've done no color grading, I've done no f fancy stuff that you can do with them. Most of the images I've been using are straight out of the camera. The video you guys have seen on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, that's straight out of the camera. That's just me doing some edits in ScreenFlow. Just the absolute basic stuff. So I'm looking at this thinking, oh my God, I can't imagine how much better these images are going to get once I learn all these settings. And just go on YouTube and look, look at some of the pro stuff. You see some incredible images on uh, YouTube of guys who have gone, who know how to fly, who know how to set their cameras up, who know how to color grade and do all the fancy stuff in Final Cut or Premiere or whatever it might be. And that's what I'm looking forward, what I was looking forward to getting to was that point where I can create these incredible, incredible images from all different ways and ways of looking at the world around me. So it's a real shame. It's, it's, it's very frustrating that this weird thing happened. One of the other odd things was that so many people were telling us on Twitter, well, don't fly over water. We live on an island. <laughs> it's a virtual island, but functionally, we live on an island. And even if we didn't live on an island, you got to fly over water. It's irresistible. It's beautiful. And Water by itself is beautiful. Water and coastline and islands yeah. and mountains and trees. And, and places where they're doing all the log booming. And it's very Pacific Northwest yes. mountains. It's just beautiful. We flew on Sunday with the boys. We went out to a place called Smuggler's Cove. And we had gone out there last summer, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And we went to the exact same place last summer. But with the drone, I was able to go out into the water, over the water. I did not realize last summer when we were there how clear that water is. It's beautiful. From 50 feet up, you can see the bottom of this little cove that we were in. It's just spectacularly beautiful. Mm -hmm. So flying over water is something you got to do. You can't, you can't say, oh, no, I, I'm... I'll only ever fly in safe places. Well, it's flying. It's three Well, why buy a twenty-three, twenty-four hundred dollar piece of equipment like that if you can't go out over the water? And with the same logic, you wouldn't fly over trees either. You wouldn't fly over buildings. Anything. You wouldn't fly anything. You wouldn't fly outside of a ten foot bubble. And you'd be like, oh, as, real. Ma as Monty says, I'm so accident prone if I have one, I, I wrap it in bubble wrap. <laughs> but that's one of the things though, that that um how easy they are to fly. Now, my dunking notwithstanding, I was surprised at how simple they were. Just do the, the basics. Just go forward, go up, come backwards, go left and right. The basics are very, very simple. Mm -hmm. It gets more complicated when you want to try to do some cinematic moves with, excuse me, with your drone. That's what I was practicing. I was starting to practice how to get um, reveals and flybys with the drone. Uh, that's not what caused this accident. I was flying straight and level on this accident. But if you just want to fly straight up and get a picture or straight ahead and get a picture, the DJI drones are very, very good for those kinds of um, flights. And I would not, I would say anyone who's interested in getting a drone, uh, the DJI Mavic Air is a smaller version of this one. Takes very good pictures, takes very good video. Uh, the, the Mavic 2 Pro, like its name suggests, is a pro-consumer camera, a prosumer camera with the Hasselblad, with the larger sensor. But if you just want to get out there and take a few cool pictures and fly in your general area, the Air is a very, very good drone to fly with. But the, the, the Mavic 2 Pro, I've never flown drone before in my entire life. And if you've seen the videos I've taken, again, they're very, very basic, but I was able to capture those videos with two or three days of practice before well, I went out. Well, I mean, my son has had his drone for years now, and he re he doesn't use very many options on it. He likes tripod yeah. mode. Yeah. Like, he doesn't he, – he, he just loves the camera on yours. Yes. He, and that's what he's wanting. Yeah. He, he likes his drone, and it's not as fancy as yours was, but – 
He just loves the Hasselblad and the colors and yeah. what it captures. If the quality of the images and the quality of the video are important to you, then don't get the Air. Get the Mavic 2 Pro because the, the, the larger sensor and the better lens is going to get you better quality. But the Air by itself takes perfectly good video, perfectly good images. Don't worry that it's, it's only for those people who are really serious about their images or professionals that you i would recommend the mavic 2 pro but the mavic air is a, is a great little drone i've heard a lot of good things about it i've seen a lot of good videos about it because that's what when I, we were talking about this originally i was thinking well we'd save some money and get and get the air instead of the the, the 2 pro but then looking at the 2 pro and the image quality it made a difference to me personally so that's uh, my two-week review of the dji mavic 2 Pro. Hopefully, DJI will be nice to me and send me another. 